Hey everybody, this is Joe back with another episode of the Waterbox 130.4 build. And I know it's been a very, very long time since I've given you a tank update. But as you all know, I was battling some green hair LG and it is gone finally. So, you know, I'm, I'm really happy with it. And, um, you know, I don't have many corals. And uh, I recently started dosing about a week ago. So I did pick up some LPS corals. Um, I have a nice scully back there, or in front here, some star polyps and green frog spawn. Back there's a little blasto. And then I have my rock flower anemone there. Over here I have some zoas and some Micro Musa with some mushrooms. There's a sea urchin back there. I also picked up a yellow-eyed coal tang, a dragon goby, and um, you know, I also picked up a lawnmower blenny. And then about a week ago, I picked up this nice small bubble tip anemone. I had a, I got a really good deal on it. I only paid 70 bucks for it. Um, it's super healthy. It finally found a spot. It moved around for a good four days until it sat right there. But it's a baby. The funny thing is, is my clownfish will try to host it, but it's so small. Like they stick their face in there and then they just kind of leave. So I don't know if they're just kind of trying to get used to it but I think it's just too small for these guys to host right now, but who knows what's gonna happen with that. And uh, I just got done doing a 10 gallon water change on this thing. And um, a couple of things I do wanna talk about. I ended up getting a lid from Reef Tops. They're based out of the UK. And I can tell you right now, stay away from that guy. Um, he really screwed me over, refuses to make me another lid, even though it's his fault. Um, it's not a huge deal, but it is to me when you pay, you know, $280 for a lid. And I know that's on the cheap end, but as you can, I don't know if you can see this, but where the feeder door is here, it slants down to the right because he cut this side way too deep you know versus that side and uh it start it like was chipped when it came in so i was like listen man send me a new new lid and uh he told me he was going to and now he doesn't respond to me because he blocked me and the only way you can get a hold of this guy is through facebook messenger so you know the reason why i chose him in the first place is because the dd slimline um ai mounts right here are UK and a lot of people have them there and he's like oh yeah I cut those all the time you know I talked to a couple of lid makers here in the US and uh, they kind of wanted me to send in the bracket one of the brackets um, so that they can cut around it um, or get the measurements for it and I just really didn't want to do that I guess I could have like hung this light or got a temporary bracket or something but I didn't want to do that um, I also kind of came up with some diffusers for this AI. Um, I found this guy on eBay who basically cuts this acrylic here and then he you get the spacers from him and then you can just go to like Home Depot or Lowe's and, and take out one of these screws and match some screws up and um, yeah. It, it looks really nice. I mean, you still have a little disco ball effect, but not a lot. And I feel like my corals are really, really liking it. And my fish are, you know, swimming around all happy. I did get rid of the yellow tang. And um, I just knew it needed about a six foot length tank. So ever since I took the tang out, all my fish are just swimming around all happy. And... Um, yeah, so I gave that, that back to the local fish store, and um, I don't know, I, I felt kind of bad, but at the same time, I know I'm doing 
that fish a favor. And um, like I said, I, I did a 10 gallon water change, so I have a towel down and a couple of things here. You know, I just did like a, I don't know, it was like 10 or 14 gallons, I wanna say. But, you know, I decided to take my reactors and put them in the front here, cause they're hang on. And I have some purigen on my left side. And on the right side, I have some Fosban. That stuff really is working. And between the Lawnmower Blenny and the Fosban and the Purigen and some of the stuff that I was dosing, like the Phosphate E from Brightwell and the um, Nopox really helped me out. Um, but I did go back to the filter socks. I know that the Media Cups are definitely a lot easier, but you know, when I was dosing the no pox, it was clogging up that polyfill really, really fast. And um, it really clogged up these filter socks as well when I used them. But one of the things that I keep finding out about these media cups is that it doesn't keep your display clean whatsoever. I mean, there's constantly stuff floating around in there and with these filter socks, that takes care of that. Um, another th new thing is I added this CPR hang in sump refugium. So I have some Chato in there spinning around in a power head and uh, those suction cups are awesome. So, you know, they, it, this thing hasn't moved on me yet. I picked up this cheap little light right here from Amazon. I think it was like $21. And uh, you know, it's got the blue, violet, red, and green spectrum. And I have it on here right now just to show you. I know it's not the greatest clarity here because of the light, but as you can see, the Chato is just spinning. And then I did take out my uh, sponge right there where the water goes into the return chamber and just put that marine pure block in there and so far it's been working really good because I was do dosing the no pox um, what happens with the no pox is it basically is carbon dosing and it's supposed to make it basically creates more bacteria um, and what happens is, is it takes out your phosphates and your nitrite or nitrates, but it creates this like white slime everywhere. So I discontinued the use of it because of that. And it really clogged up my sponge and, uh, I ended up contacting water box. I, I have two sponges that they sent me. Um, they were like eight ninety five a piece. But in the meantime, I kept that block in there and I think I'm just gonna keep that block in there because it's it's doing really, really nice. There's the Nio skimmer. Another thing that I did is uh, my pH was around 7.4 all the time. And I just started dosing manually. I actually have a coral box um, doser on the way, but I ended up hooking up this tubing and I have it drilled to the outside to bring in some fresh air. And right now my pH is about 8.1. So I know that's within range. I would like the pH to be a little higher, but I'm not gonna worry about it right now. I mean, 8.1 is better than 7.4 just from adding this line that goes outside. So yeah, that's an update on my tank. And um, I hope everybody is having a great summer. I know it's almost over, but there you go. Please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.